Stopping your news tonight are closing arguments in the rape trial of former police reservist James John Esperon, who's accused of raping a 13 year old girl. Now, you'll hear that Esperon actually admits to having sex with the minor, but what attorneys disagreed on was how old the victim was at the time and whether the evidence supports the charges. She said that she was sexually assaulted, and he said that he sexually assaulted her. This is not a case of whether or not the rape had occurred. Prosecutor Matthew Heibel in his closing arguments today says former police reservist James John Esperon even admitted to having sex with the victim. Esperon is facing multiple charges of criminal sexual conduct. What this is about is whether or not Esperon had sex with a girl when she was 13 or 14. Now, defense attorney James Robert Mortland says the girl's age matters because the indictment only charges Esperon with raping the minor when she was 13 or within the year 2011. The girl, however, in one interview with police says it happened around October 2012, which would have made her 14 and therefore the charging document incorrect. But Heibel says 2012 was only said one time. Everyone else, including the victim and the defendant, had written down 2011. The prosecutor, <clears throat> when he just made a closing, said all we have to do is prove that she was under 14. They can't do that. They can't with the fact that she said it happened the second week of October 2012. Now, defense is holding on to one date of this October 2012, but I'm going to remind you, Officer Rivera was the second person interview to that day. This is not the time where you let someone slide on a technicality. Attorney Mortland questioned the circumstances behind the written statement provided by the defendant and also the victim's credibility. They bring him down. It's the officer who knows him. He was a reservist at the police. He says, come on, Pari. Just, just write out a statement. Oh, come on. The officer, as you see, big officer, intimidating, had him write a statement. And now, we suggested to you that just because Officer Pangolina is a big guy, that somehow coerced him into not only saying that he did this, but writing it down. He's a reserved police officer himself. He knows <laughs> what rights mean. He knows whether he wants to make a statement or not, and he chose to. When she's sitting up here, she's mostly looking over towards this side. She's not making eye contact on this side of the room. And the prosecutor's going to say, oh, that's because she's afraid of this man. She's, she doesn't want to stare at him. She doesn't want to look at him. Oh, he's not looking at her? She's not looking at him? Why would anyone want to look at someone who took advantage of them, who betrayed the trust of a family member? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll, read, I'll leave you the quote from the defendant. After he admits to the sexual conduct, conduct puts his head down on that table we talked about and says, I'm going to jail. Please put him there. Please find him. Once jury instructions are completed, the case will be turned over to the jury to deliberate.